Hello and welcome. This is Michelle Christensen of OneNote Worthy Life. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do mind mapping in OneNote. Now, I myself am an avid OneNote fan, and I use OneNote to keep just about everything in my life organized and moving ahead. I'm a YouTube creator, I'm a blogger at OneNoteWorthyLife.com, and I host the OneNote Bullet Journal Facebook group. So what is mind mapping? Well, mind mapping is a visual way to represent an idea or plan. In this video, we'll be using a simple mind map that I actually made for a recent situation that I was facing. And I'll get into this a little bit later, um, but it's the main thing is this box right in the center about ordering a new desk. Um, So, um, why I needed to make this mind map was I wanted to order a desk and I had picked the desk out and I knew exactly what I wanted. And for some reason I couldn't just, I couldn't bring myself to order it. So I sat down and said, all right, well, what's holding me up? What's getting in the way? And this was the result of that. So the story is, is that the desk is going where our dining table is now, and then the dining table is going to go into a space in the living room. So working backwards from ordering the desk, I realized that if the box containing the desk were to arrive today, I'm not ready for it. And that's why I was hesitating to order it. So we're, the one thing we need to do beforehand is to clear the living room, um, which you can see here in this uh, box to the left of center. And I broke this into, into four categories. So I have some boxes that I need to empty out. We may need to move some other small items out of the living room. And then down here, uh, this is big items. So we have a couch and a bench that might need to be moved or relocated. And then the final thing is I have to get my microwave installed. Uh, that's a whole other story, but we have a microwave oven um, ready to be installed and that's in the living room as well. And I haven't been able to find an installer. So I have made progress on that. So hopefully that's coming down the pike. But I realized that all these things need to happen before I can order the desk. And they don't need to be done, but they need to be within a few days of done because the desk will take a few days to arrive. So once I've cleared the space, I can go ahead and order the desk. After the desk arrives, we need to set it up in where the table is now and then set the table up in the living room. So doing this mind map helped me get clear on kind of the steps other than just clicking the order button for the desk. Um, once I made this, I was able to work out the sequence of things that had to happen both before and after. Um, so if this doesn't make much sense to you, that's totally fine and I completely understand. I didn't understand the usefulness of mind maps for a while after I first heard of the idea. And even now, I only use mind mapping in certain circumstances. So if you aren't seeing the purpose of this, it may be because it's a new idea or maybe it just doesn't match the way you think. It's just one way to do things and if it helps you, then great, and if not, then don't use it. Um, I use mostly linear lists, but I find mind maps most useful when I have a project with a lot of intersecting parts and dependencies. Like in this case, it kind of helped me get clear on what I needed to do before I ordered the desk. So uh, if you want more information, I have linked to the Wikipedia entry on mind mapping, and I checked that out. There's a lot of really great information and visual examples there, so you can get more information there. So I got a question um, on whether or not you can mind map in OneNote, and as you can see from what you're looking at, the answer is yes. You can definitely mind map in OneNote. However, mind mapping isn't OneNote's primary function. There is software that's specifically for mind mapping, that has a lot more functionality. So I don't recommend, I don't have a recommendation for software for you because I don't actually use any mind mapping software, but you can find some options with a search online. If you need a really robust mind map with a lot of different views and the ability to expand and collapse uh, your branches, then OneNote probably isn't enough for you. If you need a simple mind map like the one I'm showing you, then you can definitely do that in OneNote. You can also import a PDF from any mind mapping software you use into OneNote. So with all that being said, let's talk about why you might want to mind map in OneNote. Well, it has a few, few advantages. Um, one is that you can uh, link to another page from your mind map. Second is you could create a task list on the page along with your mind map or links or any other things like that. And it also allows your mind map to be searchable. So um, one thing I often do is add uh, keywords to my pages so that it can be searched. So if I was searching for um, 
if I somehow misplace this mind map of what to do for my desk, I could just search on the phrase desk and find it because it's in the title of the page. Um, so I'm going to show you two ways to do uh, a mind map. One is with a stylus, and then the other is using the desktop draw function. I'm filming in OneNote for Windows 10, so if your screen looks a little different, it might be because you're using a different version. So our first example, this is a mind map um, that I actually did uh, on my tablet using the stylus. So I just drew it, drew it with my stylus. I use a Samsung Galaxy Tab A with S Pen. And this is a very reasonably priced Android tablet that comes with an integrated stylus. There's a link in the description of this video if you want more information about that. So to make this mind map, like I said, I just drew it on the tablet screen. A couple of things I want to show you though. Um, if you do need to move things around, you can use the lasso select. Um, what that does is it allows you to temporarily group together a bunch of different items into one so that you can move all of those little items as one unit. So um, let's say I wanted to move this uh, bench node down here. It's the very lowest node on my mind map. So I'm going to uh, click up here into the lasso select and I'm going to draw a loose shape around that. Okay, now it has grabbed this whole node as one item and if I wanted to move it over here, I can. And then I could also move the arrow over. And that allows you to move that um, whole node. If I hadn't used lasso select uh, on this bench node, the circle would be one item, the B would be an item, and then each letter when I lifted the pen would be a separate item and they'd all have to be moved separately. So by using lasso select, it lets you move that all as one unit. So I'm just going to undo what I just did. And you can use lasso select on both your tablet and your desktop. So I'll show you, I'll show you on the desktop in, uh, when we get into the desktop mind map. Um, so you can also use this lasso select if you wanted to color code. So for example, if I wanted to say color code all the things that have to happen before I order the desk um, to another color, I'm going to select lasso select and I'm going to lasso around all of these items. I'm going to pick a different pen color. Let's say I want these green. Um, so there you can see it's, it's not the, you know, the best pen color, but it, you can see that these are the items that need to happen before versus after. I'm going to click on do again. And you could also use the same technique if you wanted to color code them as they each get done. So as each of these nodes gets done, I could code it green to say that it's done. And then I could visually track my progress as I move through the mind map. So this is um, the stylus version of the mind map I created. Now we're going to do a um, desktop version. And I'm going to show you the finished version of this and then show you how to make it, just because I think it's easier to visualize it if you know what the finished product looks like. So this is the same mind map done on the desktop. And it looks a little different, but it's pretty much the same mind map. Um, I'm not super picky about placing the arrows and sizing the circles and things like that. So if you are, you might have to put a little more care into this. I'm not, so I, you know, it's not super neat and clean. But here we go. Um, oh, looks like I already started this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and delete these things and show you how I got them. So in my mind map, I have uh, three different circles and an arrow. So uh, I selected this purple pen and then I'm going to click on shapes and I'm going to click this. Uh, it's actually an oval, but you can make a circle with it. Um, and you can just drag it if it's not quite the right shape. So you could make an oval or whatever. So there, that looks pretty circular. Um, so I'm going to copy this now. I, so I have one circle drawn, and over here, I'm. this is going to be my sort of stock area. So I'm going to copy it, paste it once, paste it twice. Um, and the reason for that is, as you can see, we have three different size circles. So the big nodes are 
what I'm calling big circles, and then these smaller ones would be medium, and then these little ones would be the smalls. So I'm going to drag this up to, yeah, about that's about the big size. This one's going to be about medium sized, and then this one is probably a little bit bigger than my small node. Um, then we also need an arrow, and I'm going to do the same thing where I um, create one arrow, and then I can just copy it and reuse it. So I'm going to select my pen again, go into my shapes and select the arrow, and I'm going to put that right here. So now I have shapes to work with. So um, I'm going to go back to my original mind map and see what else I need to add to this. So I'm going to add this lower node here where it says install the microwave. So that's going to be a medium circle. So I'm going to select my medium circle from over here on my right. I'm going to copy it. Well, I think that looks about right. I'm going to paste it there. And I'm just going to drag it into position. And I'm going to type in it. Um, and in I, I used the biggest font for the big circles, medium font for the mediums, and then small for small. So the size, I'm going to resize this font up to an 18. And try and drag it. If you hold down your Alt button, it's right next to your spacebar, while you're dragging, you'll get a much smoother drag. Oops. All right. So now I need to connect this. I need to make an arrow between this and the clear the living room. So I'm going to take my arrow. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it somewhere in the general vicinity of where I need it. Okay, that's no good. I'm going to undo that. It ended up in my text container, which is this box you see around the words install microwave. So that arrow is still on my clipboard, so I'm just going to click a little ways away. I'm going to paste it again, and there we go. So I'm going to rotate, I'm going to grab one end of this and rotate it so that it's pointed kind of in the right direction. And I think it needs to be a little bit shorter. And I'm going to drag it into place and again hold down the Alt button so you get a nice smooth drag. And there we go. There's another node added. Um, and then I'm just going to add one, one of the big nodes so that you can see how I would do that. So after we order the desk, the next thing would be to set up the desk in the living room. So I'm going to go to my big circle. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste that somewhere up here. You can drag these things around after you paste them, so don't worry about getting the placement perfect at first. Um, and you want to click Escape to get out of the, the Draw menu when you're doing that, and then you can drag it around. So that looks like a good spot. So um, I'm going to type what set up desk in dining area. And I want to drag this a little more central, and I'm going to resize it up to the big size, which is 18. Reposition a little bit. And then obviously I need an arrow, so I'm going to grab my arrow. I'm going to copy it. Paste it somewhere in the general vicinity of where it needs to go. And let's see. I'm going to drag this end down a little bit to get it pointed in the correct direction. And I think it needs to be a little bit shorter. There we go. And you can see as I'm trying to drag it, it's kind of jerky, so I'm going to hold down the Alt button and you'll see that the dragging becomes much smoother. So I think you get the idea of how we do this. Like I created my circles, and by having them over here at the right, I, I can just um, create a small, medium, a large, and then one arrow, and then just reuse those. Uh, I could redraw each of those each time, it's just quicker to do it this way. And then this is what the finished project product looks like. 
So, and just like with the hand-drawn map, you can use the lasso select and do color coding. So let me just show you that real quick. So uh, our lasso selects in the same place. And I'm going to do the same demo. I'm going to move this bench node, the lowest node. So I'm going to click lasso select. I'm going to draw my lasso. And it's got that entire thing, including the text box, all as one unit. And I'm going to move it over here. So that's really handy because you can see how that would be cumbersome to have to move all of those items by themselves. So I'm going to click undo. And then you can also change, just like we did on the hand-drawn one, you can change the pen color. So let's say in, in this case, I want to change the color of each node as I complete it. So let's say I've done this one. I'm going to make this one node green. And then I should probably make the arrow green as well. And this is a little different because it gives you kind of a visual image of how you're progressing in your mind map. So I kind of like this idea of color coding each node as you complete it because uh, it just lets you track it right as you move through the mind map. So that's it. That's how you can make a mind map in OneNote. So I made this video in response to a question I got, and I love seeing your questions and answering them. I've linked my contact form in the description of this video, so if you have a question, just leave it in the comments of the video or use that contact form. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button so I know you liked it, and if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye!